Good evening, and welcome to the Facebook studio here at Rising Dialogue. I am Katja Gloger, a journalist from Germany, and I'm very happy to talk about an important topic tonight, uh, the heart of Europe, and we will have a conversation with two true European ladies, um, Teresa Novotna from the Czech Republic, a political scientist currently working at the Free University of Berlin, and we have Indre Makaraitite, a renowned journalist from Lithuania, head of the investigative unit of the public broadcaster in Lithuania. Our topic for the next 15 minutes, the heart of Europe. Europe, the European Union, um, has been an unprecedented success story for many decades, bringing peace, stability, prosperity to millions of people, and also bringing um, democratic rules and norms, like human rights, like the rule of law, to many million people in Europe. What we are seeing today, though, is that Europe is under threat, under threat from within. We are seeing rising polarization, fragmentation, of the European Union. We also see an authoritarian threat within the countries of the European Union. And the European Union is under threat from, uh, from uh, fr under external threat, meaning the rise of new great powers who claim a new world order. And we have uh, the United States that is retreating uh, from Europe. So sometimes it seems like Europe is um, in, uh, in the hospital, in an intensive care station. What I want to ask you is, um, is the heart of Europe still beating strong, Teresa? Well, good evening, everyone. Thank you, first of all, for having me here, both at the studio and at the conference. Well, you just mentioned this uh, hospital parallel. Uh, well, we had uh, uh, European elections, and since uh, 1st December last year, there is a new uh, European Commission, also a new High Representative for uh, Foreign Affairs, so he will be dealing with the external threat threats. So I think this, this is quite a boost uh, for the Europe, at least at the institutional level. Uh, the program so far looks promising, what the new Commission uh, has put forward, especially when it comes to uh, climate change, the new Green Deal, and so on. So, well, let's see how it's going to work in the next uh, five years or so. So you are optimistic, and Indre, you are optimistic as well. What's your experience um, with the heart of Europe beating? Yeah, the heart of Europe beating, I think, in Lithuania, because it's the center of Europe. The, the very geographical uh, center of Europe is a few kilometers far from Vilnius, the capital of Lithuania. So it's not only uh, actually a geographic term. Um, since uh, joining European Union, Lithuania is probably the most pro-European country in uh, the whole uh, Europe. And we are feeling, we have a feeling that um, lots of things happening in Europe uh, depends on little countries of European Union. We do not let Europe forget what are the real threats to the whole, uh, to the world order, to the European Union, and especially to our values, European values. So I'm very optimistic about so that. So why is Europe so important for your country, especially for your country? Uh, first of all, I think it's um, security and the uh, ability to live the way we want to live, to, to be independent. We know we have uh, uh, Russia as a neighbor in our eastern part and western part. Uh, we are surrounded by, by not uh, very democratic countries and um, always feeling that, that they want to interfere in our political process. And if Russia interferes into the United States political process, <coughs> so it's more than easy to interfere into the Baltic states uh, political processes, elections, etc. And uh, I think that European Union and uh, Europe, uh, strong and united Europe, helps us to, to say what we think about this world and how we want to live, and to share our values. 
and especially to show that you know united europe is the strong europe we have a new president of the European Commission, uh, Ursula von der Leyen. Um, she named one of her vice presidents responsible for the promotion of the European way of life. Teresa, mm -hmm. what do you understand uh, with this term? Right. Yeah, well, first, uh, maybe just a uh, note on what Indre was saying about where the heart of Europe is located mm -hmm. geographically. You know, when I was uh, looking at this theme, I uh, try to look up the internet and at the moment the heart is somewhere in Bavaria. Uh, so that's quite an interesting um, location because, you know, uh, having lived in Germany now for over a year, ba Bavaria is a bit uh, special uh, part of Germany and sort of a it bit, a, a bit of a bridge between the Central mm -hmm. and Eastern Europe and the Western Europe. Uh, but, uh, you know, to your question about promoting way of life, uh, this was probably in my view, one of those less fortunate uh, uh, expressions, I would say, when uh, Ursula von der Leyen came up with, with the new setup of the commission. But then she quite well explained it during her um, uh, during her speech in the European Parliament that you know it's not as many thought, oh, you know, it's kind of protection against uh, influx of um, migrants and so on. That it's much more about what Indre was talking about. You know um, the diversity, uh, the values, uh, and um, let's say the, the 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 common themes we have uh, together, be it from uh, center, from north, from south, or or or, or, or east west. So, if you put it this way, then it makes much more sense. So the European way of life, diversity, protection of human mm -hmm. rights, the rule of law, democratic mm -hmm. rules. Um, this might be mm. something that we or that Europe could offer mm. to the world. But now we have uh, France's president, mm. Emmanuel Macron, who is really ringing the alarm bell because he says um, Europe is so much under threat from forces within mm. that we are about to lose the European civilization and all the values of mm. the Enlightenment. Uh, do you see this as a real threat as a danger in that? I would see that as a competition within the European Union, within Europe, for leadership. But uh, we can, you know, we can point uh, fingers to bad things in Europe and to see competition as uh, 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 fragmenting Europe. But from another side, we can see and uh, we can, you know, find uh, good things in these uh, remarks not very nice remarks sometimes because uh, Mr. Macron uh, talked not only about, not only about uh, uh, losing European values, but also about the death of the brains of NATO, which is, you know, also crucial, is especially for European Eastern Europe. Um, uh, what I would like to notice is that after every crisis, Europe becomes stronger. Uh, after every crisis, Europe, uh, European leaders understand uh, that much. Um, they understand much more that unity and uh, united European Union is the you know the voice in the, in the world. And for example, imposing sanctions uh, on Russia after the Crimea, after aggression against uh, Ukraine, that was you know it was united. Uh, decision brexit it's not only the you know yes this is a bad thing but uh, european history hasn't ended with brexit look how united european union was you know negotiating with the uh, united kingdom and defending european union values so you know every crisis uh, leads somewhere and uh, i am very optimistic that it you know leads to stronger Europe and what is especially uh, crucial for uh, little countries, small mm. countries like Lithuania and Eastern Europe, uh, united Europe. Now there are many people claiming the West is out of business. So the liberal rules-based world, world order is a thing of the past. There's new, a new world order rising. We can see the tectonic shifts here at Rizina Dialogue. We can really feel it, right? Um, but nevertheless, this European way 
of life based on norms and values. Is this something that Europe as a maybe middle power can offer to the world and to countries who are looking for a sustainable way for their future? What do you think, Teresa? Yes, yes, indeed. Um, in one of the sessions uh, uh, at the conference, uh, the Czech foreign minister uh, gave a speech about Europe that it's no longer uh, from weenies because uh, Europe is working uh, on uh, boosting its uh, defense capabilities, but it's also not the country which will run the 21st century. And he called for um, collaboration with like-minded countries such as India. And I think that this is exactly what we need to, how we need to look at uh, how, the, how Europe can uh, contribute to the world order as a sort of uh, the diplomatic power, the multilateral power, which is very uh, happy and very capable of working uh, with, uh, with other countries. Uh, India here, but for my own research, which is about uh, EU and Korean Peninsula, mm -hmm. South Korea would definitely be another country within Asia that we could uh, we could definitely be very good partners mm. so so yes i think uh, i think uh, there is european way of things doing not just internally but also externally so should europe engage more with uh, other countries and especially um, in the east and in the eurasian uh, region. This is the last question to you, Inde. Yeah, I think so. And uh, today in this uh, in, in this morning panel, Mr. Rasmussen said that you know that's uh, very important that Europe would engage much more into the processes in the Middle East, in uh, in, in in Asian region. And I think that uh, uh, knowing that Europe is um, a region um, about the peace and uh, values, I think that would be very important that European leaders um, would do that. And uh, especially then, you know, United States of America sometimes um, maybe doesn't want to be that much in Europe. Europe should find its place independently. Yeah, there's lots of talks about uh, strategic autonomy for Europe. Um, do you think um, that this is uh, a way we we need to go? Right. Well, uh, the, the previous high representative, Federica Mogherini, she has uh, drafted uh, quite a substantive uh, uh, document called uh, European uh, Global Strategy, and then she, she started putting this in, uh, in, in place, in practice, and uh, strategic autonomy was one of the concepts that has, uh, has got a lot of traction. Um, and uh, I think it, it, it is a useful, u useful concept because it combines both the values but also the very kind of real politic uh, perspective. And again, I think this is also something which Europe is quite good at and should, should, pursue, uh, should pursue further. So on the one hand, more idealism in a certain sense, and on the other hand, a little bit of more realpolitik right. as uh, the German mm. Uh, word goes. You agree, Indre, on this, or it for Lithuania and for all small uh, European Union countries, uh, Baltic states, it's crucial. You know that uh, uh, transatlantic uh, relationship would uh, exist and would, you know, would exist and would uh, flourish. And uh, this, b because. Uh, uh, Every country, uh, every voice of every country, every state of European Union matters. So I think that uh, um, Lithuanian and uh, another's voice and uh, partnership with the United States, uh, feeling that the United States is crucial in our region, uh, I think that would make uh, Europe stronger and uh, the relationship with the United States not end it. So let's look optimistic, let's be optimistic that um, uh, behind these, you know, Twitter um, posts mm -hmm. and, and um, very, um, very strange, you know, speeches uh, of the leaders, uh, there, are, there is a feeling that uh, only united we are strong. Yes. Only united we are strong, so I take from our session 
that Europe's heart is still beating strong and that Europe, as tiny as it might look like from a perspective from here or even far more east from China, um, that Europe really has something to offer to the world and that we can be maybe proud of it partly, but that we really have to work on it um, to get this message out. So this is to wrap it up. Um, thank you very much for following this little session on the heart of Europe still beating strong. <laughs>